Uh, first, many thanks for this possibility of speaking in your groups. Uh, uh, I'm going to speak about quantum non-Markovianity. Um, let me resume the outline of the talk. Uh, I will start speaking about uh, two different ways of speaking about quantum non-Markovianity, that means operational and non-operational approach. Uh, I can explain this, but this is the first time in the last summer that I eat some foods from South Africa that is very similar to one here, but forget about that. That was in at that moment, that was very funny for me. Um, after discussing this, these two options, I want to convince you that there is inside operational approach with a minimal of three measurements, you can study memory effect, the phenomena of environment to system backflow information, and to relate memory effect with measurement invasiveness. Yeah. I, I call it measurement invasivity, that I don't know if it's right in English, but uh, the idea is that with only three measurements, you can do all that. Uh, before we go in, in the details, let me comment that we are in the context of open quantum system. All information or all theoretical undergrounds that we need are in this book. Uh, then we have a common language for understanding. Uh, this is a nice update from the point of view of a quantum master equation. Uh, one thing that we also need is to speak uh, what means, uh, I have a problem with some windows that I cannot see what I am presenting. We can see your slides perfectly. Huh? Uh -huh. Uh, what means uh, Markovianity? Um, as you know, there is a mathematical theory that answers that question from a physical point of view. That means von Markov approximation, rotating wave approximation. But I want to call your attention. There are time independent Lindblad equation that can be non Markovian. And it is an open issue to build up this class of evolution. We will, I will go back to this point later on. Uh, the next issue is that quantum normal community have different points. Uh, we can attack this problem from different points of view. One is from the master equation of the system, but now you know that there is a different approach that means uh, my classification is non-operational approach and operational approach. That means that you determine if there is memory effect just measuring the system or not. When you don't measure, the only information that you have is the system density propagator. Uh, this is two lines of research. This classification is not clear to me. It, it is clear there is two extreme, but in between is not clear to me if there is something there. I mean, of course, you can measure or not, but in between there is a lot uh, of result that can be in between. Uh, the other things, let me go. For example, going to non-operational approach, uh, there are this review that are well known. Um, let me speak about this. This is one of the first paper in this direction. You know, you can calculate the trace distance between two initial different states, and you say that the dynamic is non Markovian when there is revival in this distance, or in the opposite case, you say that this, it is non Markovian. But a question there is what is going on when there is revival? I want to discuss, discuss this point from the point of view of operational approach. 
point to operational approach. Let me say that this is one of the first paper in this direction. And the idea is quite simple. When there is memory effect or not, just measure the system, determine this conditional probability, and if the usual uh, Markovian definition is fulfilled, you say that the system is Markovian. But what changes when you go to a quantum regime? Well, is is very clear what change in a in a quantum regime you have a lot of degrees of freedom for defining one measurement just things in a, in a qubit when you do a measurement you have a lot of direction for performing a measurement then there are in this approach there are two options you maintain this information of which measurement you do or you can say okay if I want to say that some things is Markovian, it must be Markovian for any measurements. These are two different points of view inside operational approach. Just maintaining the information of which measurement you perform or just saying, well, this system is Markovian because it doesn't matter which measurement I do, the outcomes probability always fulfill the standard Markov probability. And these are, like two research lines that are different, or the, the conditions are different. And let me uh, again review, uh, let me say, what are the main results that I want to present you? The idea is going to operational approach with a minimum of three measurements, you can determine the presence of memory effects, if there is or not the developing of this environment to system backflow of information. And the third point is that one can relate the presence of memory effect with different property of the system and their measurement. That means in measurement invasiveness. Well, all this, I want to convince you that all this result can also be implemented in, in quantum optical experiments. And this is are the, the three topics that I want to speak. Um, let's go with the, with the first one. Now the idea is quite simple. You will measure a system three times. Um, we have the definition of Markovian probability written in terms of conditional probabilities. The vertical line means a condition. This is the usual definition of Markov probability, where you only need one object that is the conditional probability. What is non-Markovian? Looks that it is very similar, but here there is an X dependence. If you forget this last object, you realize that the minimal approach for determining memory effects you need information about three measurements because with two measurements, you don't distinguish Markov from non-Markovian. Then why we need three measurements in classical system or quantum system is because the difference appear with the third measurement or the fourth or, or whatever you do. But at least you need three measurements. And it is clear that with two measurements, you cannot distinguish Markovian from non-Markovian uh, probabilities. And it's this dependence with X that gives the difference. Of course, you can say this is enough and this defines what is a non-Markovian evolution or non-Markovian statistics. But you want to hear things in a qubit for each, um, for each measurement, you have two options, then you have eight probability here for saying that something is not Markovian, that is too much. Then the idea here is to provide some, uh, another object that if one single object that can say you that you are in Markovian or non-Markovian uh, regimes. And the idea is quite simple. Assume that all of you are right now in a meeting room at a given time. All of you are random walkers and in the past, you have random position. After the meeting, you will have random positions in the future. Then the question is, 
which is the correlation between your past position and future uh, position? Well, the answer is quite simple. If you are Markovian, there is not any correlation. If you are non-Markovian co uh, walkers, there is some correlation. And this can be derived from this definition here. Divide this object by P dy, and you get this, this relation here. That means that past and future are independent when you have a condition in between. This is, look, this here, this object is the same than here. And if you divide by P dy, you get this. This is a probability of an event in the past given a condition in the future. For non-Markovian dynamics, you have some correlation. Then the idea is quite simple. All this can be classical or quantum. Let's maintain in the classical. Just measure the correlation of what you measure between the past and future, given that you have a condition in the present. Then if your dynamic is Markovian, your correlation will be zero. If your dynamics or you have correlation between the past and the future, your dynamic is non-Markovian. This applies to any system that can be described in terms of probability. Then this is valid in a classical regime. Then the idea is what change when you go to a quantum regime? This All this is classical, bias rule, probabilities. What change when you go to a quantum regime? And what change is almost no things. Here is a representation. Uh, you have the system, you have the environment, you measure one time, later you have prop bipartite propagation between the system and the environment, you measure again, again there is propagation between the system and the environment, and you measure again the system. Then, from the up to now, there is not any difference. This is the basic scheme that I will repeat many times. Uh, T is the in time interval between the past and present measurement, and tau uh, is the time interval between the future and present measurement. Now the question is, what change in quantum mechanics? And the, here there is a very important point. You have a system with zero Hamiltonian. Then the question is, nothing happened with the system, it's closed. What do you think? It is Markovian or not? Well, it must be Markovian. No thing is happening with the system. Then the measurement cannot introduce any memory effects. For fulfilling this condition, the intermediate measurement must be projective. This is the only difference that one must remark between classical and quantum system. The intermediate measurement must be projective. If not, you are introducing an artificial uh, memory effect that is not a, a good idea. Well, when you have this ingredient, projective measurement kill any correlation between the system and the environment. That is the property that led to this condition. When, when you have this uh, approach, the only inconvenient or what you must to calculate is this probability. Now, the problem is to calculate the probability of three measurements with a time interval in between, and in between there is a bipartite uh, evolution between the system and the environment. And that is all the problem, and that is the only difference with classical physics. The intermediate measurement must be projective. Um, this uh, joint probability for three measurement can be calculated in different uh, simple models, and I want to show some results. Uh, here, uh, this is the CPF correlation. Remember that is defined here. This is, is here. And what do you expect? This is uh, in the right. Uh, these are the results for a uh, defacing dynamics under the action of a classical noise. Uh, it's quite simple, the dynamics. And what do you get is very clear. You get the CPF correlation that vanish with the time interval between measurements is not so large. And it is, this is clear. When the interval between, between measurements is large, any memory effects uh, go down. Then you get this typical structure. It's like a mountain 
uh, as a function of the two time intervals, the intervals between the first and the second measurement and the time interval between the second and third measurements. What happens if the uh, noise correlation grow up, then this will take more time to decay. In the limits, when the time correlation of the noise is infinite, you get this uh, behavior here. Uh, then the CPF correlation doesn't decay. And this behavior emerges when you also deal with this microscopic quantum model that is defacing induced by uh, an environment made of spins. It is clear for, from this calculation that the CPF correlation doesn't decay when, when the environment correlation is infinite. But it's not clear to me, just looking some examples, that this is the only uh, case where this happened. Then an open issue the, in this formalism is under which condition the CPF doesn't decay. Uh, it's not clear to me the answer. Uh, I left uh, the answer open to you also. Uh, another result that uh, this model can be implemented in quantum optics. And uh, here are the results, the theoretical and the experimental, and um, which is the difference between these plots is the number of a spin, this n capital here. You can put one spin, two spin, three spin, and so on. And uh, here are the n equal to four, eight, and infinite. And the theoreticals and the experimental. Uh, one interesting thing that I want to remark is that the CPF correlation not only detects memory effect, but can detect uh, initial system environment correlation. And the property is this one shown here, uh, uh, that when you go, the first interval goes to zero, if you see that the CPF is different for, from zero, that means that there is system environment correlation. That was checked even in an experimental way, but an open issue, is that, is it possible to distinguish which kind of correlation do you have between the system and the environment? That means, for example, uh, with quantum discord or not, if there is entanglement or not. I think that is not possible because this uh, approach doesn't change when you go to a classical regime, but perhaps adding some ingredient with this approach, one can distinguish quantum from classical system environment correlation, not only at the initial time, but during the evolution. For me, the, this is an open issue also. Uh, here, uh, I want to show another model that is a two-level system uh, that decay with a bosonic environment at zero temperature. As you know, uh, this have, from a mathematical point of view, this uh, you can get exact solution. And you get this kind of results here. The CPF correlation doesn't vanish. It only vanishes when you go to the regime where the density of a state of the environment is flat around the, the natural frequency of the system. That means a ball markov uh, approximation. This is a difference between this approach in general, operational approach, with the uh, non-operational approach, when you, for example, you see a trace distance, uh, they are depending if the system have oscillation in the density matrix, you say that the system is Markovian or not. Here, the system is always non-Markovian, and it is Markovian when you approach a von Markov uh, description or approximation. Uh, consistently, the CPF correlation, its maximal amplitude, is going down when you approach the ball Markov approximation. That here in this plot is the red line. If you go near of the ball Markov approximation, the memory effects go down. Well, from this point of view, uh, I, you see there are simple dynamics with the phasing, like this one with these spin models, uh, noise, and even bosonic environment where you can get all the calculation. I didn't show, but you can also uh, do some perturbation theory uh, to calculate the CPF correlation. 
And what is interest now in this direction is to study memory effects in complex environments. These are, in you see, you know that this model has an exact solution. You can integrate, you can do all uh, calculation in an exact way. The, the motivation right now is going to complex environment. That means, for example, chaotic, chaotic ones. Uh, with this, I finish this part, and then you can be convinced that with three measurements, you can determine the presence of memory effects just looking at the outcomes probability. The, the other uh, issue that I, uh, I want to discuss is about uh, bidirectional system information flows. I put another name to the, because that is the same that environment to system backflow of information that you determine with this trace distance or, or equivalent uh, result. And the idea is to start from a different point of view and ask some things. Let me go to this slide. Ah, look at these cartoons. The environment is the, is the cat. All this is classical. The system is the bird. In the left situation, you know, this is a mess. But let's simplify the problem. Assume that the environment and the system are two level system. Then there are, they are jumping between left and right states. In this situation, what happens? The bird, the system, try to be far away of the environment, try to be anti-correlated with the environment. The environment that is the cat try to be correlated with the system just to catch the bird. Then in this case, in the right uh, uh, cartoon, there is not any doubt. There is a mutual influence between the system and the environment. Any movement of the system implies a movement of the environment. Any movement of the environment mean imply a movement in the system. Then there is not any doubt. I think that all of us might agree that there is a bidirectional information flow because each system, the environment and the system have some influence on the other. But go to the right situation. Assume that the bird is still afraid of the cat. Then the bird will be jumping between two states depending on what the cat do. But now the cat doesn't see the system. The, the environment, the cat, have some dynamics is jumping between the left and the right, but at any, at any moment, the environment doesn't know that there is a system. Here, the environment is jumping between left and right without taking in account the system. Then this situation is quite different to that on the left. Nevertheless, in both cases, the dynamics of the system is non Markovian because you are tracing out an environment that doesn't have a, a null correlate or a small correlation. Yes, the jumps here might have a finite uh, correlation. Then the system, in a classical sense, is non-Markovian here, but is also non-Markovian here. Then the question is, can we distinguish between these two situations? because they are really different. The environment action or the environment dynamic is quite different. And if you calculate the trace distance in quantum models that approach these this two situations, you can conclude that the answer is no. You have revival in the trace distance here. You have revival in the tra trace distance here. And that, that is simply to realize if you add a Hamiltonian that is like the singing of the birds and frequencies, you get oscillation here and you get oscillation here. But for me, the, uh, I want to convince you, the situation here is quite different to that uh, in the left and the right are very different. And which is the difference? Well, looks at the partial uh, density matrix of the environment. Here in the right, this object doesn't depend on the initial condition of the system, neither depend of on any operator of the system in the, in the right. Nevertheless, in, in, in the left, the density matrix of the environments 
will depend on the initial condition of the system, the evolution of the system, uh, and you cannot write an evolution for the environment density metrics if you start in this situation. Nevertheless, in the right, sure that you can write some evolution for the density metrics of the environment that doesn't depend on any information on the system. Then one can define uh, uh, this, uh, I, uh, now I go this alternative definition that the, in the right case, there is not any bidirectional system, system environment information flow. In the right case, yes. Then the question is how to distinguish? Well, the answer is the density metrics, but now how can you do that? The density metrics of the environment is quite different in both cases. And now comes the affirmation. You can distinguish between these two cases just measuring three times. With three measuring three times, you determine if there is memory effects. Then you, you need to add some things. Then here is uh, the, the result. You measure three times as before, but after the Y measurement, you do some things. You know, after measuring with a project, uh, uh, you perform a projective measurement, then the, or the system is in, in a given project. There is a reduction of the Y vector, all that is measurement theory. Then the, the, the new ingredient is the following one. After this measurement, change the state of the system, only the system, in a random way. For example, you have a qubit. You measure that the qubit is in the upper state, then you can leave it there or change it to the minus state. If you get the minus result, leave it there or change it up to the upper state. That in a random way, that is the new ingredient. After this intermediate measurement, introduce a random transformation of the state. And how you define the, this random transformation? Well, introduce a Conditional probability is P of Y hat X. That means this is the more general that you can do. Depending on the results or the outcomes of the previous measurement, you choose a new values for the state of the system after the measurement. It can depend on the X outcome, or even you can forget this dependence. Whatever you do is, is okay. But the important ingredient is that you uh, renew the, the state of the system in a random way. That is all the ingredient. And now calculate the CPF correlation under this new condition where the new conditional would be the updated uh, state, this uh, Y uh, capital. And the affirmation is this. Remember the left and right cases. In the left cases, the dynamic is still, from the point of view of the of, of outcome, is still non-Markovian. Nevertheless, in the right case, under this procedure, the dynamics, the outcomes, becomes Markovian. Uh, this is a very simple result. If you are in this situation, after introducing this randomness in the post-measurement state, the outcomes probability becomes Markovian. In the other case, if you put uh, this uh, random state after the second measurement, the dynamic is uh, still non-Markovian. Then you have a simple experimental receipt for determining in which case you are. And that's mean that here there is a bidirectional system environment information flow, and here there is not. In the right, there is not because the environment has its own dynamics that doesn't depend on the system. That is the, the criteria uh, here. And this is uh, important in some sense because this case is the case where you couple the quantum system to a, qua to a classical noise or when the, uh, the system dynamics is defined by random uh, coefficients. So these two cases, fall in this category, then you can distinguish when the system is coupled to classical fluctuation or something that is quantum. And the criteria is what's happened with the density metrics uh, of the environment. Of course, you can ask why 
this works because it is not trivial that you that after uh, changing the system state in a random way you get these two properties well that can be demonstrated with the equation i don't want to go into equation but the idea is quite simple when you change the the, the state of the system with this receipt you get y result the y outcomes and you change to a new state and the end you disregard the, the y outcomes. And that means that in the future dynamics between the second and third measurements, you are tracing out the, the y measurements. And then what's come, the, the information relevant for the system will be the density metrics of the system. But the density metrics of the system, uh, the, sorry, density metrics of the environment. But in this case, the density metrics of the environment doesn't have any memory, any information of the dynamic of the system. That is why the dynamics becomes Markovian. You can show that with equation, with quantum measurement theory, introducing the propagators and all that. Uh, instead of discussing the equation, let me go to an example. This example, uh, the the evolution of the density matrix is written here. You have three Pauli channels, and one of the right, all rights are time dependent. One of the right is uh, always negative. Then it doesn't matter which formal is you use. This dynamic is always non Markovian. And in fact, you calculate the CPF, and the CPF doesn't vanish. But if you see a microscopic description of these dynamics, is just uh, the, the system dynamics can be written as, a, as this statistical superposition of Lindblad equation. You have a white for each one and a Lindblad equation here. If you write all this in a bipartite way, this written here, you can deduce that the environment in a formal way, the, the state of the environment is frozen. When you have some random parameter, it's like the environment is frozen and doesn't have any dynamics. Then why the, there must be an environment to system backflow information if the environment is frozen? That is a, a criticism. Well, here with this approach, you can distinguish that. There are memory effects, even the CPF correlation does indicate because the environment is frozen, that means that the environment correlation does in the case. And when you introduce this random state after the second measurement, the statistics of the outcomes becomes Markovian. That means that the CPF correlation in this new situation is zero. Then you can say, yes, of course, there are memory effects, but your environment is frozen. There is not any bidirectional system environment uh, flow of information because the CPF uh, correlation and this random state is vanished exactly. Then the conclusion is there is not any bidirectional information flow from the point of view of this approach. In another approach, if you only, for example, consider the, the sign of the right, one right is always negative. Of course, that is non Markovian. There is this revival in the trace distance, but you know that the environment is doing no thing. Um, the message is that you can distinguish this situation. And the same happens with you introduce a classical noise. This CPF correlation uh, will be zero, and the standard one is not zero. That, that means there are memory effects, but there is not any bidirectional information flow. You can calculate uh, this CPF correlation uh, for another uh, models. Here is the facing. So, uh, the system is a two-level system, uh, the facing induced by a bosonic buff at zero temperature, and this is uh, the decay of a two-level system induced by the bosonic buff also at zero temperature. You can find this model in the previous books, and you can do all calculation in, in an exact way. That is the point here. Then the standard CPF correlation is shown at the left. In both cases, doesn't vanish. In both cases, if you are not in a von Markov regime, you have memory effects. But what happened after introducing this 
random state after the intermediate measurement. In both cases, one doesn't uh, get a vanishing CPF correlation. That means that in both cases, in with this defin definition, there is a bidirectional system environment information flow. Here, uh, uh, an, uh, an interesting comment that when you have the phasing in two level system, you can always represent the dynamics by classical noise. But here, uh, the, the, this is important. If the underlying dynamics release on classical noise, the result here will be zero. Nevertheless, here, given that the environment is one to one, the CPF correlation doesn't vanish. That mm. one can deduce from this form. And this is a, a very interesting because you can distinguish what is going on with the underlying system environment dynamics. Well, a, a final comment in this issue is that I know these are two cartoons and you, it's not too much specifics, but really I, I show these two cartoons because you can translate, translate these two situations to equation. I, I did the, the equation uh, for this uh, situation where the system tried to be anti-correlated, the environment tried to be correlated, and you get uh, oscillatory behavior, for example, in the population of the system. You can also uh, do a classical master equation that represent this situation and you will not get uh, this oscillation. You can go even to a quantum regime and introduce this kind of interaction through the Hamiltonian, to the system environment of Hamiltonian, or just in dissipation. Uh, what is the idea? It is clear that one is proposing here is just to study dynamics when you can see very clear this these two this, this two situations. It, it it should be nice to to study the, this this quantum extension uh, in detail. But it's not only cartoons, but you can translate this situation to classical master equation. And the last point that I want to speak is the relation between memory effects and measurement invasivity. Let me invasivity. I don't know if it's, it's the right word in English. But before going this this issue, let me comment something that we must to agree. Suppose you have a, a closed system and you perform a quantum measurement. You know that the density metrics of the system change after the measurement. That is a pure quantum mechanics. But there are also non-selective measurements. What that mean? That you measure and you don't take care of the outcome. Well, and this is the point, that, that are not selective measurements. And this is the affirmation. I think that you, you will agree. If the measurement, the, the operator that define the measurement commute with the system state, then the density metrics of the system doesn't change. That means that the measurement that is not invasive. So if you measure a closed system and the observable commute with the density metrics and you perform a non-selective measurement, then the, the, the quantum the state of the system, that means its density metrics doesn't change. Uh, uh, but the, the main ingredient for getting this is that the measurements must to commute it with the system state. That's, that property in general is not fulfilled and any measurement, quantum measurement, change the state of the system. Deception is this case. Well, let's go in this problem. Relay invasiveness is a quantum effect. And the relation between this property and memory effect has been performed before. This is a very interesting paper and have some relation with, with the, the next results, but there is a difference. In this paper, uh, the author study when a quantum system looks like a classical one, but fixing the measurement that you perform. It's like the previous comment we, before. 
it is very different when you ask fixing the measurement or you ask saying any measurement that I can perform. It do, does, those two options gives uh, to different results uh, or give different properties. Uh, the next results are based in this manuscript that you can find in the archive. Um, well, uh, uh, I have a discussion. I submit this paper. I have the reference reports. Later, I have some communication with Simon Mills and Susanna Huelga. And the discussion, of course, was more interesting than the reference reports. And let me uh, uh, to, to show you one of the results that is not related with quantum non-Markovianity, but uh, with Markovianity. What means Markovianity, quantum Markovianity? You have uh, in all these two different approach, um, and let me go in this. You have the system propagator. For example, it can be written as the solution of a Limblad equation, but that is not enough in this uh, operational approach to say that the dynamic is Markovian. Why if you have a, a Limblad equation? Because Operator correlations are, are higher objects that, depending on the underlying model, uh, the Limblad equation is not enough for describing this the operator correlation. Then one can define uh, a, a, a strong Markovianity when you propagate or not only define the system density metrics, but also any higher objects like operator correlation. This is the quantum regression formula or the quantum regression theorem. You have only one propagator that is completely positive. It is divisible. And with that, you describe uh, any correlation. Uh, and that's defined what I call a strong Markovianity. And a strong Markovianity is an affirmation not only about the propagator, but that that is the only object that you describe that you need to describe any system correlation. This is a strong Markovianity. Another way of defining Markovianity is through probabilities. One can say that the system is Markovian if the outcome probabilities fulfill the, Mar the, the standard Markovian definition. And here I want to remark a point. I will define P Markovianity, that means Markovianity in probabilities, but I demand that this Markovian property of the outcomes is fulfilled for any kind of measurement that you perform. Then you have S Markovianity and P Markovianity. And in principle are two different definitions of Markovianity. Then the question, are they equivalent or not? And it is easy to demonstrate that the strong Markovianity imply P Markovianity. That means if you have only one propagator for describing any things, system propagator, then it is very easy to calculate probabilities using measurement theory and you use the, the propagator. And you, it is very easy really uh, to demonstrate that the strong Markovianity imply P Markovianity. That means if the quantum regression theorem is valid, then any measurement that you perform over the system fulfill the standard Markovian definition of probabilities. Now, the inverse implication, is it true? Well, it seems that no, and that is a problem because that means that the strong Markovianity is not equivalent to P Markovianity, that is mainly the motivation of all previous issues. Then I have a theorem uh, uh, for the inverse implication, and the affirmation is, is quite simple. If the underlying system environment is completely positive and divisible, then the, the other implication is also valid. What this means, the standard models of open quantum system, most of them start with the total Hamiltonian, but the total Hamiltonian the, the dynamic induced in the paper type system environment dynamics is CP and is divisible. Then in those models, 
strong Markovianity and P Markovianity are equivalent. This is a very important point because at least you have a, a regime of all the class of modeling where these two things are equivalent. And why it is important? Because when you have a strong Markovianity, that means that you have only one propagator, you can derive some properties very easily. Nevertheless, starting from P Markovianity is not easy. You know that the probability fulfill the Markovian property, but you don't know any property about the system propagator. Then uh, you cannot do any calculation starting from P Markovianity. Nevertheless, starting from, from a strong Markovianity, you can do some calculation of some properties. The propagator of the system is well defined, and you can derive some property. And then this equivalence is very important uh, because it gives a, a, a strong basis for defining what we mean by quantum Markovianity inside the, this operational approach. And what is nice is that the standard models fall in this category, where, where a standard means a, a, a unitary underlying microscopic description. Well, I did uh, the inverse demonstration is, is, uh, is very technical. It doesn't matter here. Uh, I am working in alternative demonstration, but uh, I think that the more important result or more uh, interesting result here in all the talk is this equivalence. Uh, because uh, without this, you cannot uh, prove some results. And um, I'm going now use this result using a strong Markovianity and this double implication under this condition uh, remain valid. And then let's go back to measurement invasivity. What is measurement invasivity in quantum system? Okay, you know what is, but now I want to go to distinguish Markovian from non-Markovian dynamics under this point of view, where Markovian and non-Markovian, Markovianity means these two properties that are equivalent for the, the assumed underlying dynamics. Then the, the idea uh, that you have to perform here is the following. Maintain three measurements. Now, when you do three measurements, you have this joint probability. Now there is a sum index three. Why it is important? That means that you have performed three measurements. Now, since change, you have measurement, measurement, measurements, uh, bipartite evolution in between. You calculate in some way this object, this joint probability. And from there, you can calculate this new object. That is, what happens if you doesn't care about the Y outcomes? Well, this is for uh, the probability theory, you must add over y and you get this new object is p sub index three of c and x. This gives the joint probability for the, the first measurement and the last measurement. Up to there, no thing changes. And now do these following things. Do this experiment. Now you don't perform any measurement in between. That means that you don't measure then there is only two measurements, but you perform at the same times as before. This defines this new object. Now you have P sub index two, because there are only two measurements and they are the same outcome, C and X. Then the question is, which is the difference in between P3 and P2? Well, in classical system, like, uh, like CAT and Peart, they are the same. But in quantum mechanics, no, they are different because the measurement here is doing something, is changing some things. Then for defining measuring invasivity, I use the trace distance between these two uh, probabilities that is written here. This is a distance, this is a Kol Kolmogorov distance. And then this distance between these two probability gives you an idea how much invasive is this intermediate measurement. Okay, up to here, nothing new. Then the question is, can we distinguish with this distance Markovian from non-Markovian dynamics where Markovian mean this, a strong Markovianity that is equivalent to Markovianity in probabilities. Can we distinguish? Well, this is not clear because this distance will be different from zero even for closed system. 
you have only unitary evolution of the system, this distance is not zero. Or if you have a Limbrad equation, this distance is not zero. If you have an strong non-Markovian evolution that is far away of the von Markov uh, approximation, this distance is not zero. Then it's not clear that this distance uh, allows you to distinguish Markovian from non-Markovian dynamics. Then, well, my uh, the result is that yes, you can distinguish Markovian and non-Markovian dynamics with this distance. And that is, gives you a way of distinguish Markovian from non-Markovian through measurement invasiveness. And this is the next result. Well, how can I distinguish Markovian from non-Markovian? You must do add some things again, because with three measurements and two measurements, you can't. Then what you add? Do three measurements with the, the bipartite propagation in between, calculate this, joint probability and calculate this marginal probability that only describe the joint uh, probability of the first and last measurement. That means this. And do again the, the, the experiment with only two and calculate this distance. You must do add some things. And what is the new ingredient? And it is the following one. After you have a total degree of freedom for choosing in which which uh, measurement you perform at the present time here, the Y measurement. Well, if you choose any one, you cannot distinguish uh, Markovian from non-Markovian. But here comes the affirmation. Choose, go, measure X, and before the measurement, determine which is the system state, uh, state that is known via tomography. Then before the measurement, the Y measurement, you determine which is the, the system state. The system state is diagonal in some basis. Then do these things. Choose the Y measurement such that the uh, operator that define that measurement commute with the density matrix, with the previous, the pre-measurement system state. That is the new ingredient. It's more complicated from an experimental point of view because before measuring, you must to perform another experiment to determine which is the system state. It, but you can do that in an experimental way. That is tomography. Determine which is the system state. You measure it or determine it, and you know which is the basis where it is diagonal. Then choose this Y observable such that it commute with the pre-measurement state. That is the new ingredient. Instead of randomness, do that. You have to choose only one observable that is diagonal in the same basis as the pre-measurement state. And the result is this. This distance under that condition is zero if the dynamic is in Markovian. And it is an if and only if, if it is Markovian. And it is a very nice result because choosing this observable as diagonal in the same base that the pre-measurement state, uh, Markovian dynamics uh, doesn't change or the, the, the measurement, the intermediate measurement is not invasive because this distance is zero. Nevertheless, for non-Markovian dynamics, that is not the, the case. That means if for some measurements in this original scheme, you determine the dynamics non-Markovian, then using this alternative scheme, you can always find X and C measurements such that this distance is non-zero. Then you can distinguish Markovianity from non-Markovianity through measurement invasivity. That is the, the new result. Well, and the result is if and only if, there is one implication that is easy to demonstrate that the inverse is not. Uh, here is the demonstration of the easy implication that means a strong Markovianity imply that when you measure in the same basis as the pre-measurement state, then the, the measurement is not uh, invasive. Uh, the result is quite simple. You can show with equation. That is the easy part in some sense. The inverse uh, demonstration is much more technical. 
And instead of discussing the equation, let me go to this plot. Again, a simple dynamics. You have a qubit with a noise that induces the phasing. Um, here I plot this distance. Remember what is this distance? Is the difference between these two probabilities. Is the distance between these two probabilities. One, when you measure three times and the intermediate measurement commutate with the pre-measurement state, and this other one, when you don't perform the intermediate measurement. Yes, um, here is the distance as a function of time. I assume that the interval between measurement is the same. And in the intermediate measurement, you can define it by an angle in which direction you are measuring. And what is happening is this. Of course, there is measurement invasivity, even in this case where the dynamic is in Markovian. But when you arrive to the right angle of the measurement, the invasivity goes to zero. And this happened because you are measuring in the same base where the system density matrix is diagonal and the dynamic is in Markovian. This is the uh, blue line here that is zero. And the time correlation of the noise here is very small. What happened when you increase the, the time correlation of the noise is this curve here. Even when the measurement in the intermediate measurement commutate with the pre-measurement system state, this distance is not zero. You get invasivity. And this invasivity is related to memory effects. That is the result. Then you can give a relation between invasivity and memory effects. When you are in a Markovian regime defined with probability of this strong uh, uh, property, you can always find an intermediate measurement such that the invasivity vanish, the measurement invasivity vanish. Nevertheless, when there is memory effects, you move the, the intermediate measurement and you, when you go to the angle that's implied that your measurement commutates with the pre-measurement state, this distance doesn't vanish. And this is the main result uh, here. Of course, uh, this is the result, these are the plots. The one of the implication is here, it's easy to demonstrate. And this has uh, a strong relation with the Legate-Gar inequality that in some sense, in some sense say how much non-classical are uh, measurement correlation. Uh, I will not go uh, into this inequality, but the result is this, for this inequality, if you measure all the, 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 the this inequality follows measured two times at different times, uh, you have an inequality, but from this approach, one can affirm, affirm that this inequality is always fulfilled uh, uh, for Markovian dynamics when you measure observables that commutate with the pre-measurement system state. And if you do that, that means measuring always. Look, remember what, how you begin this section. If you measure in the base where the system state is diagonal, you don't change the state. The affirmation is this. If you measure a Markovian system in the base where the, uh, the density matrix is diagonal, you always fulfill the Gettigar inequality. When you introduce memory effect, it might, uh, you might, if you violate the Gettigar inequality, sure that you have memory effect. The, the result is only in one direction. Well, and that is the, the main result of the, this third part. And then uh, we can go to the conclusion. I think that we're in time. Um, the affirmation is this. Uh, quantum Markovianity can be studied from different approach. Uh, I choose uh, the operational approach. That means that you measure the system, you determine. Uh, memory effect by measuring the system, not only from the properties of the uh, density metrics propagator. And you need a minimum of three measurements. Why three and not two? Is because non-Markovian effects, even in a classical regime, start to appear when you see objects that in, in, involves three measurements. Of course, uh, this definition of one, uh, quantum non-Markovianity is the same that in a classical regime. Uh, and you, with that, you can detect 
memory effect with the CPF correlation. Introducing this randomness after the second measurement, you can define something like the environment to system backflow or information and distinguish dynamics where the environment is have its own dynamics or uh, it's depend on the system. You can distinguish between those situations that that's very important because this, you distinguish which dynamics from the point of view measurement can be represented, for example, by classical noise or not. And the last result is that one uh, derive uh, a relation between measuring invasivity and memory effects. That means performing three measurements, but with the intermediate one commuted with the pre-measurement state. And with that, uh, you can determine if there is memory effects or not. Well, that are the main results. Um, what I work in, in right now, I am interested is going uh, non-integral system environment dynamics. That means many body dynamics uh, where there might be phase transition and all that. Also, uh, the, the, the experiment that was performed here are with optical system where projected measurements can be performed. In another arrangement, uh, that is not so easy, for example, in magnetic resonance, it's not so easy to represent a, a projective measurement. And then I am interested also in how you can translate all these results to those experimental uh, arrangements. And that is more or less what I am interested in right now. Uh, well, that is all, and many thanks for, for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much, Adrian, for an excellent uh, talk and for managing to to uh, to show so clearly what Markov and non-Markov means. Thank you very much. Are there questions for 